Everybody, how's it going? Today, let's take a detailed look at the 2014 Jaguar XJLR. And this is going to be a detailed, in depth review of the XJLR. We'll start it up to the engine, and get an exhaust clipping over the performance data, as we'll show you a bunch of the unique aspects of the interior as well as exterior. And before we begin, I'd like to take a moment to extend a big thanks and special shout out to Scott Jaguar, located in Charlotte, North Carolina, for allowing me to come out and film the new 2014 Jaguar XJRL. And so, without further ado, let's go ahead and start her up. Let her run. Now the XJR, just like the rest of the XJ lineup, features a remote smart key access system as standard. All you have to do is just keep the key fob in your pocket and utilizing the chrome accented buttons and touch sensors on all four of the door handles, you're able to lock and lock the vehicle. To lock, just tap the little buttons. Your mirrors will automatically fold in. Then after waiting a second, just grab the handle. There's touch sensors located behind and it automatically unlocks the vehicle. Also, if you fail to close the door all the way, there's a soft close feature with an electromechanical mechanism built in to automatically pull the door close to the frame. The exterior color is now a Stratus Gray, featuring a two-tone jet black and ivory leather interior with color accent stitching. And along with that smart key system, the vehicle also comes standard with a remote push button ignition via the button mounted in the dash. To start, all you have to do is just put your foot on the brake and hit the button to go. Beautiful sound. Now the XJR features speed sensitive hydraulic assist rack and pinion power steering in this beautiful thick three spoke hand stitched leather wrapped steering wheel. Plenty of chrome bright work across your spokes and multifunction controls with a leather stitched airbag cover and the leather is actually pretty unique. It's very soft and supple and styled with a, a tuck and roll design where it kind of wraps around the wheel and tucks into this crease as you go completely around. Definitely a unique styling cue. Not to mention, specific R badging located in the bottom spoke. As far as the gearbox, the standard and only transmission available is an electronically controlled 8-speed automatic via this transmission controller in the center console. To activate, just put your foot on the brake and twist to your desired gear. Sport mode, push down, twist all the way to the right. And once you put it in reverse, your backup camera automatically appears in your LCD display with guidance lines that automatically adjust as you turn the wheel. And when you put the vehicle in sport mode, you can shift the vehicle manually via the paddles mounted behind the steering wheel. The gauge cluster also shows you what gear you're in on the left-hand side. 
Now something that I always like to make mention about the newest generation XJ's interior is how wonderfully executed the modern interpretation of classic styling flows throughout the entire interior. The door panels wonderfully flow into the dash with either wood or black piano veneer in this particular model, and it's actually quite a bespoke feeling for this particular vehicle class. Plenty of chrome bright work found throughout. Even the knurled aluminum finish on the transmission controller with the black piano veneer. Everything is highly customizable with a variety of materials and color options. It's just such a wonderful vehicle. It's definitely different from anything else in this class, and definitely something that I think makes Jaguar very unique. Now one of the first things you notice about the XJ is its 12.3 inch thin film transistor liquid crystal display. Now there's a number of manufacturers that have started utilizing these digital displays for their customizability and ease of use. Now what's pretty cool also in the Jaguar is that it kind of gives a three dimensional display of chrome accented rings and there's actually little lights that will follow the needles for the speedometer as well as the tachometer. Kind of tracing as it climbs. Definitely pretty neat. You have the Jaguar logo in the middle of the speedometer, as well as the supercharged and the tachometer for supercharged models. In addition, the Jaguar driving dynamics controller, when you parse it and put it in dynamic mode, it changes from blue to backlit red. And so, we're gonna flip on the automatic projector headlamps, rear fog lamps, as well as the hazards. Naturally, all four windows are fully automatic with laminated glass. And yeah, we're going to check out the exterior, shall we? You'll also notice that the interior will chime a few times, letting you know it's lost the texture of the proximity key fob. When Jaguar debuted the all-new XJ for 2010, it was perfectly clear the direction Jaguar was moving in with their lineup. Revitalizing a brand known for its rich history of traditional craftsmanship and elegant designs with state-of-the-art building techniques and modern technology. These efforts play a part in launching the brand headfirst as a viable competitor towards the steep German competition from Audi, BMW, and Mercedes. Just like how the respective brands have their own tuning divisions, for Jaguar, the highest performance offerings are recognized by one letter, R. For 2014, the Jaguar XJR returns to the lineup in the form of a highly potent rear-wheel drive monster, boasting a 550 horsepower supercharged V8 also shared with the over-the-top XKRS and XFRS. The XJR takes the place of the previously offered XJ Supersport as the most powerful XJ available, carrying 40 additional horsepower and 41 pound-feet of torque more than the Supersport. Last year, an all-new 3-liter supercharged V6 with the brand's first all-wheel drive system debuted, along with an all-new 8-speed automatic to replace the outgoing 6-speed, promising better performance and fuel economy. That car is covered in another video, but just as an example of the wide range of performance options available. Combine that with both short and long wheelbase versions and high customizability, and the cars can appeal to a wide variety of buyers for multiple reasons. Jaguar has always been known as a very traditional luxury brand, sticking to its roots with the classic proportions and styling that was unmistakably Jaguar. From the classic XJ6 to the XJ8, they always remain reminiscent of models from the 1960s while blending in modern technology and performance with the supercharged R models, first appearing in 1995 with the XJ6. While very unique and stylish, they weren't necessarily the most competitive or innovative cars when stacked up against their German rivals, and in their defense, they really didn't need to be at the time. Jaguars have a personality all their own. They're exhilarating, luxurious, and have a touch of old world class that's really hard to match. When the last generation XJ8 became a bit long in the tooth, Jag took a big step in revitalizing that passion and exhilaration by radically redesigning its flagship for 2010, simply calling it the XJ. An all-new car, breaking from tradition, it represented a new direction for the brand while faithfully keeping that same Jaguar flavor. The styling, while a dramatic departure, is not only modern and daring, but it's also functional, as the XJ is one of the most aerodynamic Jaguars to date. Its long, low-slung hood flows across the glass roof into a fastback coupe-like profile with a high deck lid. It gives it a muscular profile up front with a stately, more elegant rear treatment with modest badging in chrome finished off by polished twin exhaust tips and blacked-out C-pillars, giving the appearance that the glass wraps around the rear. LED tail lamps out back complement the Bi-Xenon headlamps up front. The body itself benefits from lightweight aluminum construction that's bonded and riveted together to keep it sturdy and well poised around the curves. 
Proportionally speaking, it's 4.9 inches longer than the short wheelbase counterpart, directly translated into more rear seat space. It's also 6.4 inches longer than a Jaguar XF, but weighs about the same. Another fun fact is that the XJR actually weighs 31 pounds less than an XKRS, even though the wheelbase is about 10 inches longer and it's 11.5 inches longer overall, again tipping the hat in the direction of aluminum intensive construction. The XJR differs itself with unique front and rear fascias with extended rocker panels. Up front, large chrome accented intakes help funnel extra cool air, while black mesh grills add to the menacing look. Functional heat extractor vents are located on the hood with superchargers written across. Out back is a subtle lip spoiler with the quad polished exhaust tips, and other than special badging and emblems, the XJR can be considered as a sleeper to the untrained eye, or at least to hear the roar of the exhaust. The XJR features its own unique wheel and tire package, consisting of 20-inch Farallon offset forged aluminum 5 twin-spoke alloys, 9 inches wide in front and 10 and inches wide in the rear. Wrapped in high-performance custom asymmetric Pirelli P0 tires, 265-35s in front and 295-30s in the rear. As far as the brakes, the XJR receives a beefed-up set of internally ventilated disc brakes measuring 15 inches up front with two-piston sliding calipers and 14.8 inches in the rear with single-piston sliding calipers, positioned towards the middle for better weight distribution. With this setup, the XJR can be brought to a stop from 60 miles an hour in as little as 105 feet. In addition to stability control, ABS, and traction control, the XJR also receives Jaguar's driver-adjustable two-mode variable dampers, along with the active electronic differential, a part of the dynamic mode that can firm up the suspension and steering to enhance its already nimble profile, up to 30% over the standard cars. The suspension consists of independent double wishbones in front and a multi-link rear that utilizes aluminum components and front and rear stabilizer bars. Overall length is 206.8 inches with a width of 74.8 inches and a height of 57.4 inches. Total curb weight, depending on how equipped, is around 4,100 to 4,300 pounds. So we're gonna pop the hood. The XJR is powered by an all-aluminum, supercharged, 5-liter, dual overhead cam, 32-valve V8 with direct fuel injection and dual-variable valve timing. Thanks to a bit of computer remapping compared to the XJ Super Sport, the XJR produces a whopping 550 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 502 pound-feet of torque as low as 2,500 RPM. Its red line is 6,600 RPM with a 9.5 to 1 compression ratio. This translates to 0 to 60 times of around 4 seconds, with quarter mile times of 12.2 seconds at 117 miles an hour. Top speed is also greater and electronically limited to 174 miles an hour. The 8 speed automatic is specifically tuned for the XJR in that it determines shift speed, shift points, and how long to hold the gears based on acceleration, braking, and steering inputs. As far as fuel economy, with a 21.7 gallon tank running on required premium fuel, expect a range between 15 miles to a gallon in the city and 23 on the highway. I'll talk about this a few more times, I'm sure, but one of the things that I love the most about the new XJ is how well built and beautifully executed the interior is when you experience it in person. Styling is a fantastic combination of old world traditional cues and craftsmanship with modern technology and convenience. Just about everywhere you look, there's soft, supple leather wrapping the panels and touch points. Plenty of polished chrome bright work and your choice of wood or carbon fiber veneers. Of course, many of your vital electric features are located on the door, including your power windows, power mirrors, and folding mirrors, as well as your three-position driver-side memory. The passenger seat also features three-person memory, and your power locks are located up in the dash, not to mention a little bit of storage in the bottom of the door panels. Taking a closer look at the seats, you notice that the sport leather buckets are specific to the XJR and feature a bit more of a robust, aggressive nature to provide superior lateral grip and cornering compared to the standard seats. All of your power adjustments are located down below, including your four-way power lumbar, side bolstering adjustment, and extending the lower cushion. Attention to detail is fantastic, as you'd expect, and you'll notice that the color accent stitching on the seats also match the stitching across the dash and the door panels. The seats are also perforated for the heating and cooling function. Special R badging embossed on the top of the seats, while the headrests and seat belts are fully adjustable. Continuing on down, you have a large, prominent aluminum door sill entry guard with the Jaguar inscription, as well as logoed color accent floor mats, aluminum sport pedals, and a power tilt telescoping steering wheel with auto tilt function. 
Taking a closer look at the dash, like I said, it's completely wrapped in hand-stitched leather. The black piano veneer continues from the door across the dash, circling the length of the vehicle. The circular air vents help add to the classic theme, accented by high-gloss black trim and plenty of chrome brightwork. Nicely finished off with a full Alcantara headliner and a panoramic glass roof. So let's go ahead and see if she sounds. There is a rev limiter in park and neutral around 4,000 RPM. So we got to shut her up. Nice solid panels. There are three sound systems available for the XJ lineup, but the XJR comes standard with the mid-grade level, an 825-watt 20-speaker audio system with 7.1 channel surround sound. All fit through an 8-inch mobile media navigation telemetrics interface with touchscreen capabilities and standard satellite radio. The audio system is wonderfully clear and nicely balanced. Throughout Cantera line, they fillers with side curtain airbags, hands-free Bluetooth microphones on either side so all the passengers can be heard equally, as well as Alcantara line visors with card holder and illuminated vanity mirrors. The rear view mirror is auto dimming with three position garage home link located down below. As far as the top stack here, you have your controls for your rear sunshade, parking sensors, as well as your sunshade and automatic sunroof. Another really neat thing about the XJ is its touch sensitive reading lamps. But as far as the sunroof, you press it once to automatically open the vent, and then press it again to open up fully. A wind deflector automatically pops up. And then same for putting it down. And the sun shades. This controls the back glass, and this the main sunroof. So press them both to go ahead and close it. So as far as our mobile media system, it's really quite simple to use like I mentioned earlier. Right now, we're in our main menu or home screen, activated via the menu button right there. It's a shortcut screen that basically shows your basic data for audio and video, navigation, telephone, and other system functions. A lot of the main functions can also be accessed via the shortcut keys right below the screen itself. So if we go over to audio and video first, there's a whole lot of different compatibility and functionality as far as the different media options you can use in the XJ. For example, if you hit Source, iPod, Auxiliary Integration, Hands-Free Bluetooth Streaming of Audio, USB, CD Changer, and it's also DVD compatible, so you can load up DVDs and play it via the My Videos section. There's also standard satellite radio, as well as HD radio along with your standard AM FM. So in the AM FM screen, and this also goes for satellite radio, down below are your different preset stations, scanning Seek, as well as bringing up the song and artist information. Settings include turning your HD radio as well as your um, song information, as well as the audio settings. The audio settings consist of all of your preset equalizers, tone, balance, and fade, 
as well as three different surround sound modes, Dolby Digital and DTS Certified Surround Sound. Listing the available stations in the area, as well as manually inputting a frequency. Like I said, it's pretty quick to go between the different menus. So, also, if you didn't want to go through the touchscreen system, right below the CD changer, you can change the different radio modes going between your media, as well as standard radio and satellite radio, eject, audio visual brings up this screen here, your audio adjustments, and also your seat adjustments. So, your heated and ventilated seats, three stage, as well as controls for the rear seats, which are also heated and ventilated. While you're in the media screen going through your MP3 player, you can also browse through the system, just like you would on your iPod. And you have the same setting screen here, but you have a little bit different um, options. If we go back to our main menu, hit navigation. Brings up an easy to see map, also with real-time traffic updates. Change the different view modes. Your back button takes you right back to the main screen, and you can hit destination input from the map screen. Pretty simple and coherent. Put in preset places down below as well as set your home destination. Not to mention emergency roadside assistance. You can also hit destination input from the main screen if you wanted to skip a step. Your hands-free Bluetooth telephone. It'll automatically ask you to pair it, otherwise it'll automatically connect when you start the vehicle. You can store contacts and voice dial with the voice recognition system. Your valet mode up top locks out certain features if you didn't want your personal settings tampered with. System settings. Clock adjust language. Adjusting the voice recognition system, and again, another way to access your audio settings. Take Me Home would basically be your navigation preset for your home, so you can just hit a one-stop shop and not have to go through the whole navigation system. Phone book automatically syncs with your phone, of course, when the Bluetooth system's connected. And Climate shows your basic climate control data where you can adjust your different zones, defrost, see the fan speed, but the majority is controlled down below here, and I'll show you in just a second. Again. You can access the front and rear seat controls for your heated and ventilated seats. As well as recycling settings. You can turn the screen off or off completely. But really, in a nutshell, those are all the basic features of the mobile media system in the new XJL. Right below the screen, like I said earlier, menu, phone, navigation, lock and unlock, your hazards, as well as your standard auto start or stop feature. Basically what that is, when the vehicle comes to a full stop, whether at a stoplight or a stop sign, it'll shut off momentarily to conserve a little bit of fuel until you take your foot off the brake and go ahead and hit the gas, and it'll automatically reignite so you're ready to go. Down below that, like I said, the rest of your um, audio settings. Now this XJR also features an electronic quad zone automatic climate control system with independent zone and temperature adjustments for all four passengers. To change the zones, you actually have to go through the touchscreen interface like I showed you earlier, but your temperature, one touch automatic, front and rear defrost, and fan speed are easily accessible in the center stack. As we continue down the beautifully leather wrapped, as well as black piano veneer and chrome accented center console, we have two covers here, the Hydro metallic accented cup holders, electronic park and brake, small storage, as well as a leather padded armrest with a good amount of storage down below, lined in felt, with your media inputs including your USB and auxiliary, as well as a power outlet. Your beautiful aircraft inspired air vents with modest chrome and high gloss black finish with an elegant analog clock located front and center. All XJs also have a name tag up in the center portion of the dash, and this particular one accented with the R logo. Now as far as the steering wheel, your driver info system is located here as well as your cruise control on the other side, telephone controls, heated steering wheel activation, as well as your hands-free voice commands. Help. Voice help. Voice commands are generally given in the following format. device function, and setting. To give a command, briefly press the voice button 
and speak naturally after the tone. To cancel a voice session, press and hold the voice button. To reply to the voice system, Very simple, so you can learn upon the system, become a little bit more familiar with it, and see the commands displayed right in the speedometer cluster so it doesn't distract you from the road. Your cruise control and adaptive cruise settings are located at the bottom right hand side of the steering column. Now like I said earlier, these TFT displays allow a very simple traditional layout but packs a whole lot of different information and functionality to it. For the driver info system in the XJ, you use the lines in the little directional arrows in the OK button on the right hand side of the steering wheel. The tachometer disappears once you select to go to the different options. So this is your main menu, various warnings like speed warnings, etc. Vehicle setup, basically all of your personalizable options, trip computer, display settings, as well as service reminders. The left hand side of the gauges show your vehicle fuel, temperature, as well as what's currently playing on the radio, time, and outside temperature. Alrighty. We'll go ahead and shut her down. Beautiful. Now let's go ahead and check out the back seat. Back seat passengers in the XJL are treated with a fantastic amount of supple leather and luxury. With the unique two tone leather color scheme coming into the rear. Power sun shades for each door, which I'll show in just a second, as well as the storage and overall theme that you would see in the front. The seats are also perforated, like I mentioned earlier, heated and ventilated, with the R badging located on the back, brushed aluminum entry guards, as well as storage on the back of the seats. Now the standard XJ already has a pretty good amount of room in the back seat, but what the XJL does with its longer wheelbase gives it almost limousine-like space, pretty much typical of what you would see in a Mercedes-Benz S-Class or a long wheelbase BMW 7 Series, something in that nature. It definitely helps entry and exit, especially for taller individuals. So one of the first things you'll notice when you climb into the back seat really is how much room there is. There's plenty of room to stretch your legs out, especially under the seat, and just kind of kick back and relax. Another thing specifically to the XJ long wheelbase that I notice is that the seats feel more defined in the back. They feel more sporty, kind of like a, a bucket seat. So the middle of the seats are cut out a little bit more, so you sit down a little bit lower. There's more lateral support on the side too, so you feel like you got a little bit more grip side to side. Overall, it's definitely a pretty cool place to sit, in my opinion, for a longer journey that makes you feel a little bit more excited to climb into than a traditional luxury sedan would feel. Of course, you have your quad zone climate control, which I'll show those controls in just a second. Leather accent and grip handles up top, reading lamps, not to mention a leather center console, a storage up front, as well as a little bit more in the back with two cup holders. As far as overall space, I'm 5'11", with a comfortable seating position for someone of my height up front. Probably have about an inch, inch and a half of head space and probably 8 to 10 inches of leg space. Leg space is no issue at all. But the XJ with its fastback roof line trades a little bit of head space for that sleek exterior appearance. Definitely not a bad thing in my mind unless you're over um, 6 foot 1 or 2 or something. Your sun shades are easily accessed. You're just pulling up on the window switch and the window is up. And they're one touch automatic just like the window. A little ashtray here. As well as your quad zone climate settings for the rear. Your three stage heated and ventilated seats, different zones, fan speed and temperature for each side. There's also two 12 volt power outlets. Up in the rear, like I said, are your reading lamps and controls for your sunshades. For the rear portion, as well as your rear sunshade. The headrests are also adjustable. Your grip handles up top, like I said, they are accented in leather, and coat hooks are located right behind it. 
in addition to an extra set on the B pillar. And a long wheelbase car wouldn't be complete without a set of vanity mirrors. Beautiful vehicle. So let's go and check out the rest of the vehicle, shall we? Open up the full power lift gate standard on the XJR and you'll find a respectable 15.2 cubic feet of cargo space. It's not huge, but more than enough to take a little bit of an extended vacation. A nice wide opening with cargo tie downs, as well as the Jaguar inscription across the aluminum entry guard plaque. Taking a look down below, it houses your spare tire as well as the vehicle's battery and all of your jacking equipment. You also have the same power adjustments for the passenger seat that you find on the drivers, including three-person memory. It's just such a cool styling cue to see that dash wrap into the door panel so seamlessly. The glove box is also electronically actuated and LED lit with felt and a good amount of storage. The Jaguar XJ is a perfect example of a work of automotive art, blending the best of old tradition with modern design elements and a great value for luxury. It creates one of the most captivating and unique styles you can find today. If you're looking for something different and unique, the XJ is the right vehicle for you. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look at the 2014 Jaguar XJLR. Be sure to stay tuned next time, there's a lot more where that came from. Take care everybody.